Good morning. We are so glad you could join us here this uh, this first Saturday of spring. That's right. And I think it's actually going to feel today is going to feel a little like spring. Tomorrow may be another matter, but uh, <laughs> it is March, Debbie. It is March. It is March. <laughs> Happy March. So yes. We are so glad you're here. Peggy's here, and actually, it's it's good to be with you. I, it's, between our schedules, it's been a few weeks before we, since we've been together this here. This is so. very true. It's nice to be back. Absolutely. But it's particularly nice to be back when we have such an enjoyable guest. Mm -hmm. You know, we had her over last night. She's at the sleepover at my house. That's always fun. You <laughs> know? Fun. We get to chat, 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 you know, and exchange thoughts and ideas, and that's what so much is about. But anyway, we do have a wonderful young lady, Nicole Himmerhorn, with us here today. And and she is definitely the herb lady. Okay. Thanks, Debbie. <laughs> and she's going to share all of her thinking uh, and, and what she puts into practice with the herbs. But before you get started with all of our wonderful announcements, let's bring up a fun thing, okay? She's going to talk about herbs and vegetables. And isn't that a dream? That oh, is a dream. my goodness. That is not a private, I mean, that is not a, a public, public garden. garden. I would have sworn that's a public garden. It isn't. <laughs> it's a private garden. And the lady is a master gardener. Mm. She just created this incredible place. I don't, I don't know. I just sat down on the little hillside and admired it. But today, we are going to talk about reality. That's right. And what better person to talk about? Now, you are, you are a grower of herb herbs. That's correct. That's yes. great. We grow 250 varieties. Wow. Of herbs and vegetables. That's organic, great. by the way. Great. Yep. Yes, Absolutely. which is fantastic. Well, she has a lot to, to bring to you today, so we're not going to be taking phone calls. We've got a whole hour to, to uh, get some great tips and great ideas and see some great plants. Before we get started, just wanted to let you know what's happening at Maryfield Garden Center, because this is a big weekend. We are inviting you to our spring gardening celebration this weekend at all three stores. Basically a nine to five, but we're there all day. And we've got lots of great things going on. <clears throat> we're, what we're doing is kicking off the spring season. We just want to make it fun today, this weekend. So we've got free appetizers from 10 to four. We've got experts on hand, you know, our gardening experts. Plus we've brought in several people, the Fairfax and Prince William Master Gardeners are gonna be there. It, and this is all at various times of the weekend. Not everybody's there at, at all times. And just a couple of the, the plant societies are gonna be there. Arlington Rose Foundation, Old Dominion Chrysanthemum, Northern Virginia Bonsai Society. And I think the Potomac Costa Club is having a a meeting at Fair Oaks tomorrow so they'll be there you know if you want to go upstairs and, and talk to them so lots lots going on uh, we're going to be having our seminars of course um, as part of it so as usual our first one at our Maryfield location well they're all at 10 a.m. so at our Maryfield location Michael Fay is going to be talking about spring flowering shrubs at our Fair Oaks location, you ladies are going to bolt right out of here. <laughs> Absolutely. Nicole will we'll be there, God willing. <laughs> <laughs> because we do we have to leave the show and dash out there. But she'll have the opportunity to share over an hour with you on not just planting these herbs, but how she uses them, which is such an important thing. That's going to be You can get a teaser today and then go and ask you questions and everything later, right? That's, That's right. right. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then at our Fair Oaks location, I mean, excuse me, at our Gainesville location, David Yost is going to be there talking about building the lawn of your dreams. So that's an important one. If you need to get your lawn in shape, that's a great one to take advantage of. Go ahead and let you know what's happening next week as well. Um, March 30th, we're going to be talking about ground covers and vines, layered gardening, and native plants. So as you, as, as you can see, you can always go to the website, maryfieldgardencenter.com. If you have any questions, if you want to see the entire schedule, and of course the website has all kinds of great uh, things for you to look at. Also part of this weekend, we're having some free drawings. So register to win some great prizes. Actually, we're having two drawings. We're having our regular spring gardening celebration weekend drawing, which is going to be for Maryfield gift cards, uh, for Wizards, Capitals, Nationals tickets. There's some events at the Verizon Center. So register for those. Also, we have tickets to the NBA, let me get this right, NCAA Men's Basketball East Regional Games, which are at Verizon Center on Thursday and Saturday of next week. So you win tickets to one of those. Uh, that drawing will be going on actually through Monday night. So register for both of those drawings this weekend. 
don't have to purchase anything. You have to be over 18, though. Uh, so just come in and uh, and put your uh, name in the ba in the in the bucket, and you might be pretty lucky. So, <laughs> so please come in and join us this weekend. It's going to be lots of fun. So. It will be a lot of information to be had. And it is. so let's get back to some information. Okay. And back to Miss Nicole. <laughs> We chatted all last evening and on the way or whatever um, about all these wonderful herbs and how you use them and so forth. And you have time to share with us two that most of us know, but probably underuse. Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. that is a wonderful breakfast herbs, you were saying? Yes. We, um, you know, just different ways to use the herbs. And the more you use them, I think the more excited you'll get about it, you'll get that flavor, mm -hmm. and then you won't want to go back. Right. Um, right. And you know, so many of the herbs are perennial. So you can have them in the garden year round and be able to go out and harvest them. Um, one of the favorite breakfast herbs is chives. Right. Which is a very... And do you think of it as a breakfast herb, really? I know. Yeah. Do, do people, everybody does. That's yeah. right. But um, with <laughs> eggs, fresh yeah. eggs, scrambled, Chop some chives in there, and you've just totally changed the taste of the uh, of the scrambled eggs. Um, so it can be that simple, right? And they bloom beautifully. They too. do Ooh. bloom, and the blooms yes. are edible, which a lot of people don't know a lot that about herbs either. Most of the blooms are edible, and you can take that onion chive bloom, break it up gently, and sprinkle it on a salad, on a stir oh, fry, yeah. or again in your scrambled eggs, right. and uh, enjoy that really mild onion onion flavor. And it's wonderful. I, I enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Now the garlic chives too. The garlic yes. chives have a mild garlic flavor, uh, and their uh, blooms are edible as well. They usually typically bloom in the fall, so you can have spring blooms and fall blooms with the two different varieties. Uh, again, they're perennial, clump forming. Once you've got them, you, there's your onion chives blooming right now. Mm -hmm. So they're the blooms that you can take apart. Mm -hmm. But once you have either of these in the garden, you'll have them for life. <laughs> yes, you do. Now, one thing that I've discovered with the chives over the years, and I use them in my cooking quite a bit. Oh, sour cream, they're so good, oh, too. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> but cheese. if you cut them close to the ground after they bloomed, and you don't necessarily want them to seed all over the place. Yes. You got them, they, they come back so quickly. Exactly. Yeah, Very it's fresh. probably only two or three weeks, and you've got all new growth again. All new, and yep. you can do that several times exactly. through the season. Yep, yep. It's, it's fantastic. And after those garlic chives, um, which I think, yes, I go. love this because it's just a sea of white. Yes, and they're really pretty in our herbal vinegar. We make a lot of vinegars in the fall. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And so to stop that seed going to seed, you harvest the uh, blooms and use them in an herbal vinegar. And wouldn't that be pretty? Exactly, it's oh. beautiful. And then impart some mild garlic flavor too. That would be wonderful. And look, this, she has a lovely, lovely little statue there. I'm very fond of accenting some of these things with <laughs> yeah. the little statue. Yeah, this is all from our so, garden. Two oh, right, really fun herbs that are not that's unusual herbs either. All right. And that's just the start. Uh, so we're gonna take a quick beginning. break and we'll come back with more great ideas. Welcome back. We are talking herbs today, and we have a great guest. Miss Nicole, you've got some wonderful ideas for us, and uh, you ladies have just been having fun talking about them. Well, it's a wonderful topic. It's a great subject. <laughs> yes, it's edible. Anything edible. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and I know that she's talking about now, well, we talked about breakfast. Now we're going to talk about lunch. Okay. okay. And for fun thing for lunch is edible flowers. I love to add some flowers to a salad. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that my daughter will do is take the flower blooms, put them in some ice cube trays, and freeze those for the drinks. Ooh, to then ah, throw in the lemonade or even great. water, just in water. They're so pretty. Yeah. And if you do eat a little bit, won't mm -hmm. hurt you. Right. You know? yeah. So um, the violas, you know, are edible, edible flowers mm -hmm. that, that we grow. The calendula. So the calendula is yeah. a beautiful. Um, we don't have a bloom. We don't. Yeah, oh, but we, we do. do. We have we a have right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's from Forgot our garden. That's an <laughs> early spring bloom, uh, and that is the petals are all edible. You can take those, break them up into a salad. It's also was it's known as poor man's saffron. Mm. So it was used to color 
uh, rice oh, or really? uh, yeah, different mm. dishes. So um, it you know it adds some colour to to a salad or to so rice. Mm -hmm. Be good with rice also. The next um, the edibles that we love is these nasturtiums. They are just spectacular <sighs> colours. All on the one plant, the variegation of the leaf is beautiful also, and the leaf and the bloom are edible. Uh, and they have a mild spicy flavor, so a little bit of arugula, almost a horseradish mix to us. Um, we'll just pick those leaves off, and if we get a shot of the flower... Let's come back to the desk yeah, into this little at, flower look here. Look the size of those. Um, oh, we'll bring up the, the, the uh, green one, if we can come in close on these, honey. The size of the bloom oh, can be mm -hmm. like a on, wow. a on a burger. Really? You know, yeah, wow. add it to a burger. Look mm -hmm. at the size of it. Yeah, look yeah. at this bloom. It's almost like a lily pad. Yeah, but yeah, pop that still for a second, ladies. On the burger and um, there we go. Just have one leaf as your green. Wow. And that mild spicy flavor. It's just mm. delicious. And also when the um, when the blooms then form the seed pod, I've seen those seed pods pickled. Oh, and really? Used kind of like capers. Now that's interesting. I've never done that. Oh, yeah, that's really ah. fun. So ah, you harvest capers. those seed pods that's and then great. you can pickle them. Yeah. That's so great. you know, just some really fun things. And uh, you know, people don't think about this. This is wonderful. I, I know. Yeah. And they're you know they're fairly easy growing. The one trick for us is pot shade. In okay. this region, full sun, they will just burn up. Right. So pot shade, and they will bloom April through our first frost. Now sometimes that's November for us. Wow. Right. We're just an hour and a half. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I cannot tell you how much I enjoy these nasturtiums. Mm -hmm. And I do have part shade. You know, I'm full sun nowhere. Right. You know, basically. <laughs> but I start now with Nicole's plants already growing and put those in the ground. And then I put seeds in too, As well. so that good I idea. can just keep, keep them, them going, going. Mm -hmm. here. They go right through the summer for me because, as you say, they love part shade. Yeah. So, woo, you got to have Some nice nasturtiums. That's yeah. great. And and the the fragrance, just crumpling it up and smelling. If you could just smell each of these, <laughs> I know. <laughs> The studio right. smells wonderful right it's now. Great. <laughs> yeah. it's true. But there's another one, much maligned. Exactly. I think. The French no. marigolds. <laughs> um, just love the French marigolds. They are just we, they call we call them the workhorse in the garden. As far as a repellent herb, they're wonderful. Uh, mixed in mm -hmm. to the into your vegetable garden is the really important thing for that. Yeah, let's get the color the photo go. of the bloom there. Mm -hmm. um, just non-stop blooming, and you see that picture too is a good representation. Non-stop blooms. This is a short-ish variety, and your French marigolds mm -hmm. mostly are you know we'll shorter down variety. Down so you can really see um, what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And just mixed in the vegetable garden, non-stop blooms all summer, mm -hmm. you know, they'll drop seed and kind of reseed themselves. You can collect the seed, mm -hmm. you know, later in the year um, for the next year. Great in a salad, excellent in an herbal vinegar. Wow. They look spectacular. And because they're edible, you know, the, you, um, it wouldn't hurt if a little bit. I always say, don't put anything in your vinegar you don't want in your salad dressing. Right. Because okay, as you're using right, your vinegar right, right. to make your salad dressing, you don't ever want to say a few peppercorns is wonderful, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. So these will add some beautiful color. And then just white flies, they deter white flies, um, and then other bugs, and just a, what a wonderful herb. Um, now, the trick is with marigolds, if it doesn't smell, it doesn't repel. They've okay. got to smell. Oh, a lot wow. of the hybrids now don't have the smell, well, they don't repel. Good They're point. beautiful, mm -hmm. right. but they won't have right. the repellent properties. Mm. Right. Well, so. really, we sell the majority are the French marigolds, and they um. are the ones that, that well, the fragrance is why you grow these things. Well, yes. I think so. Some <laughs> people don't like the smell, but I say, you know I what, They're so they're so helpful in the mm -hmm. garden. They're doing oh, their job. We talked about the nematodes. <coughs> yes. The uh, roots exude a uh, chemical that will kill the bad nematodes in the soil and encourage right. good nematodes. So the thing to do at the end of the season is not pull them up, but actually to till them in. And you're improving your soil as you do that. So they smell great, they're edible, they're improving your soil. You what can't be better. Exactly. <laughs> now I think we've got one more that's a fun thing too. 
peppers? Well, yeah, yeah. they saw the Did photo come up. What it was, okay. the marigolds were in there with a poinsettia pepper. Oh, and if you've okay. never seen that bloom, and, and there it is, yeah. that bloom is just a spectacular group of uh, peppers that for reeds. Uh, there are, you know, it's a group of peppers like, like you see right there and on a fairly short stem. So in reeds and again in um, uh, herbal vinegars, they are wonderful. I was about to those. say, yes, now the different peppers will have different degrees of heat. heat. Yes. 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 Yeah. yes. So be aware of that. But I know being a, a true southern girl, and when we ate the turnip greens and we ate the various greens, there had to be a pepper vinegar to go in it absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> that and a piece of cornbread <laughs> okay, there you go yeah. okay all right we're going to take another quick break and uh, mm. stay tuned and we will be right back with more great ideas Hey, we're talking herbs today, and we're <laughs> we're, we're smelling the herbs today. <laughs> it's yeah. wonderful. I'm in here. sitting in next to them. <laughs> Forget smelling the roses. That's right. Yeah. Smell the herbs. <laughs> That's right. Okay, what's next, ladies? More herbs. <laughs> more herbs. <laughs> more herbs. What else? I think she has some for the dinner table. I do. Oh, okay. I do. I have some herbs for the dinner table. Um, one of the uh, one of the next photos that we're going to look at is some arugula blooming. And again, we talked about the blooms being edible. The bloom of the arugula is has a nutty flavor to it. So very, very good again in the salad. It could be a dinner salad in this case um, with some, you know, some goat cheese and a little bit of herbal vinegar. Or um, the other thing to do is throw it in a stir fry. Mm. Wow. So that last few minutes of the stir fry, take those blooms, kind of break them, break right. them up and throw them in a stir fry. And it is delicious. Now this arugula can go seed or go to bloom fairly quickly, but you know that's one I've never done that with. Mm -hmm. With the arugula, you've got plenty of it. Oh, now the do. trick is too; it's a cool weather crop. It right. likes to go in the garden right now. So often we wait to plant it, and that's why we that's why it goes to seed go, so quickly. Right. You know, it can really go in the garden now right. and um, and then enjoy it through the spring as the leaf, mm -hmm. let it bloom. Now the other thing, we let a lot of herbs bloom in the garden, uh, at the farm, because we keep bees. Bees love herb blooms. I mean, just fantastic. So for attracting your pollinators, you know, if you're going to grow tomatoes in the summer, you've got to have, you've got to be attracting those right. pollinators before the tomatoes are blooming. Mm -hmm. So this way, these are, this mm -hmm. is like an early bloom. Your chives are an early bloom. This mm -hmm. arugula, you'll find the bees out there on it, enjoying it as well as you. I love that. And now, I think they're, the next picture, doesn't it show it in, in the it, raised bed? It does. There yeah. it is. Now we have some, that's mixed in with some fennel. Uh, and there's the two kinds of fennel. There's the bronze fennel in there and the green fennel. Now they're both leaf fennels, not bulbing, okay. um, which is it's a different variety. But all the flavor, that fennel, uh, broken the stem broken off, put on a piece of salmon, and grilled oh, in yum. a foil packet. <laughs> yes, absolutely, we do use that. yes, okay. absolutely delicious. It has all the flavor of the bulbing fennel, but it's all in the leaf and the stem. Mm. So it makes a really, really wonderful. Um, you know, dinner, dinner But the herb. seeds too. The seeds are fantastic. Oh, the yes. seed is full of licorice flavor. Yes. So if you like black jelly oh, beans, wow. these are way healthier, <laughs> much healthier for you. Um, and you know, they have a really, really good flavor. So that with, um, there's a Italian cookie they make, pizzelli, or pizzelli, that is a very, very thin waffle and it has the fennel seed in it. Oh, it's good in a bread too. Oh, okay. It's really good in a yes. bread. Yeah. So, or with a cream cheese um, on a bagel, you know, and I'm, I meant to mention that for breakfast, so I'm going to go back to breakfast. <laughs> an herbal cream cheese with like an asiago. Yeah, I'm hungry now. No, really. <laughs> Where are the bagels? With an asiago bagel with the herbal right. cream cheese. Just mm -hmm. delicious. If you could make that cream cheese the day before and let it sit in the fridge and oh, get wow. those flavors through. it's. And, you know, people think, well, you know, you've gone to some trouble, but not all that, especially if the herbs are out right in the because, backyard right. yeah yeah and yet it's just gourmet it, mm -hmm. you know whoa you know this is really gourmet right and it is <laughs> and but it's right that easy exactly <laughs> yeah but it is which easy. makes it nice yeah. yeah um so we've got some we had some cilantro in that garden too you know cilantro is a cool weather crop 
It does uh, not like the heat. It can go in the ground right now. Okay. You see the size of it? It's yes. been loving this weather. Mm -hmm. right. uh, you know, this is ready for harvesting. Cut this right down here. It'll, it'll come, come back. Come right back. Okay. And it'll do that until it blooms. And it'll bloom, you know, typically that you know, that first week of 90 degree mm -hmm. that we have, you know, right. sometimes that's April, sometimes right. it's June. This year uh, we don't know. Exactly. <laughs> this year we won't know until it happens. But go ahead and harvest that and then, um, you know, do let it bloom. The, the, once the bloom forms the seed, the seed is called coriander. Right. And that's the coriander seed that we use mm. as a spice. Okay. So huh. again, each part of this is edible. Uh, and just delicious, but it is a cool weather crop, so the idea is to get that in the ground right now, right yes. when you're getting your use it in. several times, let it go to seed and save the seeds. Exactly, yeah. That's great. Um, and then we had collards and kale in that bed too. Now we have made a pesto with those. Ooh, so, pesto. Oh, love, we do too. Mm. Now you mm. can add the arugula to that for a spicy spiciness, mm. or just take your you know, your kale or your collards, right. make that into a pesto. You can use some almonds or some walnuts to get some different flavor than the pine nuts. Um, and then use that with a pasta mm -hmm. and you have dinner. Wow. Mm. Now the pesto. Can you come to my house? Oh, yeah. I would, I'd be glad to. I do. I do love to cook. I don't have as much time as I used to, but um, you know, some of those can be real easy. Now also, we'll have time in the fall. We do plant a fall garden as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll have time in the fall. We'll freeze those pestos and then we'll have those times like this when I've got, you know, some chicken left over, some angel hair pasta mm -hmm. that I can throw on. I can actually Quick have dinner easy. on the table in 15 minutes. Wow. Yeah. And fresh That's from the garden. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. And let's share one one more picture I think that you have here that is underused and so often used in Thai cooking. cooking. Yeah. Right. It, it is beautiful, but it, it's grass, but it's an annual. Yes, yeah. it does. You, we have to treat it as an annual here. It's a lemongrass. Now, this makes a wonderful tea. Just hot boiling water poured over those leaves. The tea is really Oh, wow. The only ingredient. It, you know, it's the lemongrass leaves. It's an incredible tea. Uh, it dries well too. So even though it's an annual, you know, it'll die with the mm -hmm. frost. If you've harvested it and keep it for the winter, you'll always have fresh you oh, know, lemongrass tea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that makes it beautiful. It makes a wonderful sorbet. We do like a, um, an event at the farm with all different herbal ice creams and sorbets. Oh. The lemongrass, just the flavor of it is absolutely incredible. So it makes a wonderful sorbet. And again, of course, it is really, really good with, um, with the Thai, any kind of Asian cooking. Oh. But anywhere you're looking for lemon flavor, it's, it's delicious. But here again, rather than being in a complete herb garden, I told you we were going to talk about down to earth and not exactly. necessarily Real. the dream garden, <laughs> is to be able to put those things in and among your shrubs or your mm -hmm. um, perennials. Yep. Uh, it's it's fantastic to use them, and and it's a nice three footer. Yeah, yeah, about yeah. Three foot it gets tall big, and it's, it's got that grass look, which is great contrast in the leaves. So it's exactly. beautiful. Yep, and edible, and so useful. Oh, and <laughs> you were exactly. saying earlier, you don't have to have a specific herb no. garden. No. Exactly. No. Things, if you can mix a, a it in. That in. photo we had some artemisia in there too, mm -hmm. so that's a, just a perennial, mm -hmm. and then we had some lemon verbena, which is you know so a couple of annuals with the perennial. You know, fills in. It gets huge. I mean, one lemongrass in full sun will get this big yeah. around in one season. In one even season. though it's just this little guy. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it starts yeah. as a four-inch mm -hmm. plant. Amazing. Right. It is. Ah, it's, loves it's the fun. heat. Fun, fun, okay. fun. All right. So we've had breakfast, lunch, lunch and, and dinner. dinner. All right. We'll see what dessert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about dessert. Right. <laughs> we will be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. I hope you all are enjoying this as much as I am, because these are great <laughs> ideas. This breakfast, lunch, and dinner idea is super. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, but every, after you've got, have, well, if you're going to have the breakfast, lunch, and dinner, mm -hmm. you need to know how to do it. That's right. So, how do you grow all How can you do it? Okay. Okay, the best way for us, and, and in our farm, this is what we do, is almost all entirely raised beds. Um, they just lift you up whatever soil you have and it ours is very poor it's red clay mm -hmm. you know just nothing mm -hmm. grows in it so we've just raised up the beds and you'll see some of the photos as we go along different versions of the raised beds but that's the best way to do it you make your um, soil mix exactly what it is you want herbs don't need a whole lot of fertilizer and, and right. herbs and vegetables are a wonderful uh, mix 
something that I've noticed both with my research and with my growing is herb, uh, herbs and vegetables that go together in the kitchen grow together in the garden. Basil and tomatoes, mm. cucumbers and dill. Isn't that amazing? So those things that go together, grow together. All right. So companion planting is a just easy, easy, fun, delicious way to, to garden. So with raised beds, mm -hmm. if we go to that first shot, we will mm -hmm. see a raised bed there. This is, um, this is a late April bed. So you see the calendula there, it's the orange blooms. There's some oregano there. Um, there's some lovage. Now, if you grab that lovage I plant, I can do for that, us, and I love is, the lovage yeah, also, and, and it's a big one it too. It is. This will get big and huge, yeah. Let's and it tastes. Come back to this one at the table here. This tastes like celery, which is amazing. Mm. So you have so again in a rice, just rice cut up with this. Cook your rice, throw this in while it's still warm, and then eat that, and you get this mild celery flavor. Um, it is wonderful. So, uh, bloody there go. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's some. Oh, oh thank you. Mm -hmm. There's some bloody sorrel in that bed too. So oh, you'll grab that. Good. I know you've got. And to it's love such this. a fun thing. I told her this is this is pretty promiscuous. Hold that down too. a little bit. Here, I'll grab that. <laughs> it Let me get this Debbie, all in the Debbie's shot here. A better holder. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. So you see this red vein dock, as it's known as, or bloody sorrel. The the very new leaves are the ones to eat. They're kind of a lemony flavor. Um, but this will take a lot more water than a lot of herbs like it's almost a uh, stage four bog it, plant. I was going to say the leaves look like that would yeah, be the case. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it likes a little more water so if you have a spot that you need oh, need oh, that. Oh, wow. No, it, it'll grow in your raised bed as well which These is wonderful. These are just wonderful. It'll grow um, anywhere and, <laughs> and it does seed by the way it does and it's not obnoxious in that. Mm -hmm. It's so pretty. It is. <laughs> and exactly for all yeah. that. Yeah and then in that bed too is mm. some dill and some chervil. I wanted to show you a close up mm -hmm. of that just yeah, because of the um, the leaf, the delicateness of this leaf, but it's a hardy uh, biennial, um, so every other year you'll lose it like okay. your parsley, mm -hmm. but it's got the French, it's called French parsley, and it has that little bit of anise flavor, but just look at the delicateness of that, almost looks like a fern. It does. Yeah. It does. Um, mm -hmm. But then just tucked in the garden, it, it'll again, it does love the spring. These are all kind of spring loving herbs. Um, but they'll, you know, they'll go through the summer too. Uh, Eucalendula, you know, stops blooming and, and looks okay. okay. But right. I can trim it back and let the other things kind of grow, let the oregano grow and some um, sole and things. So this is just wonderful. So you saw in that space, which I believe is like right. a, a t two by three mm -hmm. beds. Doesn't look big, yeah. Yeah, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight herbs in wow. there. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it's amazing mm -hmm. how many herbs you can pack <coughs> into a small space. Yeah. Should um, we take a look at the next picture and see what we've got here? Let's see where we're at. Right. Okay. So, another raised bed. Now, this has the chives blooming, so you know it's kind of sometime in April. It has some more arugula there. You can see at the farm we do love arugula. Um, behind the arugula is the French tarragon coming up. Now, again, a, a a perennial that doesn't like our summers. So that means that, uh, you know, in the summertime, it just really limps through the humidity. Right. It but is, I found that to be the only herb that I have a challenge with. Really, yeah. I yeah. keep yeah. doing it though. Yeah. Well, and yeah. Never give up. Never exactly. Give up. Never surrender <laughs> to the weather. That's right. Yeah. Oh. That's what we should say about tomorrow. We're not surrendering. Right. <laughs> Going ahead. It is spring. It's officially spring. So um, the arugula, the tarragon there, onion chives, there's curly parsley tucked in there, and then we've just planted the cucumbers. Mm. So they'll grow up that little terrace that we have there. We try to, um, you know, use up all the space that we right. have. So vertical growing is, mm -hmm. is so wonderful that you can do in a raised bed. Those cucumbers will grow up there. And um, that's, you know, just another raised bed. Um, there's another shot of, oh, this is a close-up of the chervil, um, the parcel, and some bok choy. So see the big leaves over there? That's the bok choy, which is formed very, very nicely. The parcel is in the back. It's a parsley celery combination, and then the chervil's up front. What a beautiful! It and is. It's know, lovely. And each of those is a blossoms. Yeah, and each of those is a different green and a different right. texture, mm -hmm. and all edible. That's so great. you know right. that makes it wonderful. Um, there's one more photo. This is later in the season. This is in October. So that's kind of an expanse. We have uh, eight to ten raised beds in that area, and that's where we kind of raise our vegetables for our for our family. It's uh -huh. a shot of the, the house in the back. Um, so peppers, tomatoes, beets, onions, and marigolds in there. 
um, you know, among other things, but that's kind of what we can see. So the, uh, you know, we're putting in the later, this is October, so we're planting the beets for the fall. Right. We do a fall crop as well. So that's the other nice thing about the raised beds. You can be gardening three seasons. And that can be nine to ten months in our area. Mm -hmm. So you can be harvesting things out of your um, out of your beds for nine to ten months of the year, which you know I had read. Uh, this was in a New York Times uh, news article about what three three years ago that a four by four raised bed for average family of four just for a summer crop could save up to four hundred dollars in your really? grocery bill. Really? Wow! And imagine the health benefits of eating mm -hmm. out of your own backyard. Right. Plus the fact that. Everything she's talking about and everything they do is organic. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, that's yeah. how we grow. So that's the encouraging thing. It's yeah. possible. Mm -hmm. It is possible. Mm -hmm. You know, right. now nobody said gardening was easy. Right. That I heard of. That's right. <laughs> no, no, not, not know, the harvesting nor the canning. Yeah, yeah exactly. So rewarding. And where could you possibly be? And and be amongst. Uh, I can't keep my hands. <laughs> I know, really, they just. It is. It's a, it's, it's a just tactile wonderful. Thing. Yeah. Wonderful. Just you moving that. Uh, I, it's, it's wafting it's, through yeah. here. It's then, great. This was this was Thai basil. Mm -hmm. And when you're thinking about uh, basils, ah, uh, you know, it's wonderful. That's There's right. so many different. Well, that's the thing. We bring you know, 250 varieties, and that's 20 varieties of basil. You know, 10 right. varieties of rosemary. 30 varieties of thyme, 20 varieties of lavender. Wow. It, it's amazing. Mm. Right. Yes. Okay, ladies, we're going to take another break. and we come, We're coming back, and again, we're not taking phone calls, so we've got <laughs> lots more time to talk about herbs. Okay, we're back. We're having so much fun here today. <laughs> <laughs> you have to come to the seminar and have more fun. That's yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right, what's next, ladies? Herbs in the landscape. Yeah, so this is, yeah, you know, you herbs and vegetables in the landscape. We, mm -hmm. you know, as um, Debbie mentioned, it doesn't just have to be an herb garden. Right. You can mix them in. Mm -hmm. There's so many perennials um, that you can keep, you know, trim. Uh, yeah, here's a photo. So here's some catmint. This is kind of late, late spring. Some catmint there blooming. Now that'll do that three times. That's a perennial. Um, it's a, you know, false lavender is what people also call it. Cause look at right. those blooms. And it's so much easier. But, I've oh. got to have lavender, but lavender is not the easiest plant to grow here. Exactly. So your catmint <laughs> will do that three times in a season. Hmm. So cut early spring, yep, cut it back. It'll bloom again in the summer, cut it back, and then it'll bloom again in the fall. And for us, that's a great one for the bees because they're feeding on that. Right. Bees mm -hmm. love anything lavender colored. And it's amazing how many mm -hmm. herbs bloom in the shade of lavender. That's something mm -hmm. we've noticed mm -hmm. at our farm. Mm -hmm. So we have, you know, up to 18 to 20 beehives on the property, you know, in the, in the heat of the height of the season. And they now never had anybody stung by honeybee. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> never had anybody stung by a honeybee. They're so much more interested in the plants than, than us, right, you know, right. we, so that's not a, that's a safe thing to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, but you'll see some tansy over here to the side getting, getting tall and that will get taller. Um, and then there's some Santalina in there. In the background, the white blooming is the valerian. Uh, you know, you see a tree in there uh, mixed in, you know, with the evergreen. Right. Um, and then the marigolds are just planted. The violas, they'll come out you know, and we'll replace that with some gum from the or some other um, annual. So, you know, you've got bare bones with your perennials, and then you mix in your annuals. You've got your trees there. Off to the other side is some um, crepe myrtles. Um, so mix them in, you know, don't just relegate them to an herb garden. Right. Um, so the next shot is, this is a favorite at the farm. This is called hyacinth, purple hyacinth bean, or also Jefferson bean, people know it as. So it's a, um, just a beautiful annual. See how tall that's gotten? That's probably probably eight feet tall, blooming there. There's another uh, close-up of the bean shot and the bloom. Spectacular. Now, edible, too, oh, which is right. wonderful. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, my, uh, my niece's mother came from the Philippines, and when she saw that blooming in the garden, she's like, oh, that's the bean that we stir fry. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 
So well, you catch the bean very young. Yes, young, yeah. exactly, because okay. otherwise yeah. it would be too tough. Right. But, right. you know, yeah, that was that was really neat. Now, we oh, mostly okay. grow it ornamentally, but again, the hummingbirds, the butterflies, and the bees all are attracted to these, you know, to these things blooming. So, um, you know, that's just one I wanted to kind of plug as far as landscaping. It's a great, right. fast-growing, sun-loving annual that will just cover up a trellis. We actually also grow it on a... Uh, old chain link fence and in the winter time people look at me in my garden and think oh that's ugly but they come back in the summer you can't even tell it's there, there you go. so I'm not giving up my chain link fence <laughs> for that reason no. so that's uh, you know we really encourage you to put herbs in the landscape you see there that's it low growing that's where it's vining up with some artemisia in the background we love the artemisias one they're perennial so that makes it nice we'll use them in wreaths but do you know what else we found is praying mantis nests on oh, those artemisias. Really? And when we find them, we kind of leave them for the winter. We don't trim in the fall for those. We'll, we'll trim them back in the spring. When we find those uh, praying mantis nests, we'll take those up to the greenhouse and hatch them up there hmm. and use them as there a... There you go. Yeah, exactly. Oh, what fun as is a, that? Is that? Yeah. You know, let's, so. let's use the next two pictures in this segment also because it, it contains something but I think it's important for you to know. So let, let's bring up the next picture because I got out into the garden last Saturday because it was such a beautiful day. And today would be possible too. And tucked in a few of those early, cool loving vegetables, cool. whether it be the, the broccoli or the cabbage or the lettuce. Particularly I put in a lot of lettuce. And I don't deep dig in my beds because I, I've been working with them for so many years and use a lot of mulch. Um, so I can just make those holes and put in a little organic fertilizer yep. and a good blended one. And I'm geared to go. But it's the next picture that, that uh, and I, yeah, I did bring this up. The next picture, because of the season, and let Nicole tell you how she uses this. I asked her on the way in, do you use very much of this frost cloth? And she said, oh, yes. I covered those things that I planted last week with this frost cloth. It's very lightweight. The sun and the water goes through it. As you can see, I've anchored it with those sod staples, mm -hmm. which is very easy to do, and leave it nice and loose for those things to grow. But, Nicole, if there's any other things you can share with us, I found this to be incredible stuff this frost cloth and she's got some here at the table yeah and we did we did the same thing last night and the night before we actually took a roll of it and just rolled it over our raised beds the whole row of raised beds mm -hmm. so we got five five beds covered wow. um, you know right. for the for the night and that's allowed us because I think we planted like two weeks ago mm -hmm. so we've been watching that weather but covering them the other thing we found is uh, for seed germination so instead of covering the seeds it just right. to be lightly covered they you put this over it uh, mist it it'll let the light through it'll let the water through but it, they'll feel covered mm -hmm. so as soon as they germinate you would take yes, that off it's, it's nice it's and right. lightweight it and is mm -hmm. and the other thing that's nice like this this is how it stores it packs mm -hmm. down to this you yeah. know those hoop houses and things they're nice but then you've right. got to store them the rest of the year right this just yeah. folds up back into a plastic and bag. I think it's two or three degrees difference which is all that you need yeah. right. for instance uh, some of these things now I would not put basil out yet okay no. but some of these that have come just recently out of the greenhouse can tolerate they they not just tolerate they want the right. cool weather yes. to get established but there's the difference you can go ahead and put them in let their little roots get in and as I said I planted the the lettuce plants from you they're organic got them in the ground and then if you add go ahead and plant a few seeds you've got two crops coming on at the same time you know. yep and this really yeah. helps to get them so, going I, I think this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. This is, it comes in different ways, but it's called Harvest Guard. All right, Debbie, yeah, let's see, see if I can pull is. this off over there. There we go. Harvest Guard, okay. Giving too much glare, but. Oh, no, well, it's yeah. you got <laughs> doing okay, yeah. you know. Yeah. Okay. But it's a wonderful, wonderful mm -hmm. aid and can help you with that organic gardening thing mm -hmm. too. Okay, true. You know. yeah, All right. We can do that. <laughs> we've got one more break to take and then we've got one more great segment for you. Stay tuned. Yes. 
products are always important. <laughs> well, and that one is particularly because right now, while your daffodils and all the bulbs are up, is the time to put that bulb, sprinkle that bulb mm -hmm. time or tone around because it takes the green foliage to utilize the fertilizer that makes next year's bloom. Right. So that was appropriate. <laughs> and, and speaking of product, you were there was another point you wanted to make about the frost cloth, right? Well, let's bring up the first picture because we are in the last segment here okay. and I want to share some thoughts with you really quick and she can share that thought with this picture. This is my herb garden it, at prime time. It does not look like that right <laughs> now, okay? But another thing that you were saying about the frost cloth. Yeah, the frost cloth you can use, you know, we, t we just mentioned organic gardening as we left to that break, is use it when the uh, moths and things are about to lay on your crops, whether they're the summer or the spring crops. If you can get that harvest guard or frost blanket right. on, stop the moths laying, you won't have the caterpillars. So that's one of the things Another great thing. Organic to, garden. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's 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 roll through these pictures right quick because we don't have much time. I do a lot of gardening in containers also. Yeah. And and I love it because I mix them out in the garden and there's the nasturtiums. It's it's sort of rising out of the ground of cover. Of the time. Of yeah. the time. Yeah. And I use the time. Snipping it with my little Georgetown scissors, using it, it just makes it all the better yeah. and in the next two pictures is I do not have to even say this to Nicole because she's got young children also that are incredibly involved with what they're doing in the garden I of course totally believe in getting our kids out into the garden and out with nature and of course this is Eamon and Liam they have devoted each they've taken everything out from the foundation on the sides of their home and they've turned it into herbs, and strawberries, and oh, vegetables. And it's amazing in the next picture, I think it's Eamon watering the little beet plants that he just put in. And so, but it's attractive too. You know, it's probably five, six feet deep and, and then they mulch it down with the pine straw and it, it's beautiful. Now, we've, we've talked an awful lot about the herbs and the vegetables and how wonderful they are. But we certainly are all into the beauty of the garden, and right now we're starved. So I went out into our annual section at the Fair Oaks location and just gathered together some of the cool season annuals. Now you've got to put pansies and violas in here. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. I'm sure you use those to garnish your green mm -hmm. Yeah, the violas are, uh, you know, are edible, mm -hmm. and so we mix those all through, you know, the, for eating. The pansies you could garnish with, absolutely. Right, and but I beautiful. just love it. And, and while you don't cook with the a sweet alyssum, when it's in bloom, it's so, again, it's this, it's this delight of the senses. Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's wonderful. Just wonderful. Well, and that's part of cooking with herbs, I think, because I can have olive oil on the stove, mm -hmm. four herbs in there. Mm -hmm. My husband will walk in, you know, from the green and says, honey, dinner smells great. I don't know what I else. I'm cooking anything Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's true. I have not cooked a thing. Something's defrosting in the microwave while I'm doing that. But the smell, it makes you want to mm -hmm. eat the thing, wow. you know. And so, the true of all flowers, if they smell, you know, Gardening and cooking is hands, smell, taste, right. and, and the All beauty of the, of the eye. Exactly, it can be pretty. And again, uh, as I said, Nicole did a sleepover with me at the house last night, and she came in and she said, oh, look at your dining table. I had staged, actually, <laughs> <What's beautiful? laughs> uh, an Easter presentation, because these plants are not just for uh, outside, and I thought, you know, why not enjoy the beauty of these plants for the Easter season and then plant them out? Everybody, th there's ranunculus in there, and there's, uh, what else did I put in there? Sweet alyssum, so it's very, very fragrant, and of course the Easter decorations. And then after Easter, go they'll go out into the garden. But if we come back and just show you this wonderful, wonderful uh, it's an annual treated here, ranunculus, and, and you have to say it's brief. You've got to enjoy it while it's here. It's cool season, but it's worth every penny. Fun, fun, fun. Now, another thing that Nicole mentioned was that she 
saved the artemisia. It's a beautiful gray foliage, and she saved a lot of the other things for wreaths. And of course, these are wreaths that one would use in the house. But many, many years ago, uh, at a gardening seminar, someone said, your front door is, and you've heard me say this before, a reflection of your personality. So, take a little trip out to your front door and see what it looks like. You may want to come in and, uh, oh, we have some of the prettiest. In fact, this year, I think, at all three locations, mm -hmm. really, because I'm mostly at Paris, it is spectacular. Oh, yeah. It's just worth the trip. It's, so, uh, look at your personality is, on the spring. front door and see if it measures <laughs> up. I had to go update. take a look. That's right. <laughs> well, I can't believe this hour has flown by. This has been I fascinating. I, as I said, I hope you all have enjoyed this as much as I have. And do take advantage. Nicole yes. is going to leave here, go to our Fair Oaks location right now. So at 10 a.m., the seminar will start at, at Fair Oaks. We'll be there, we so. hope. <laughs> yes, that's right. You, that's you right. ladies will see be there. So, so, and come by. Yeah, as I said, we're having the spring gardening uh, celebration this weekend. Please come by, say hello to us. Uh, one of our viewers, Nancy, is going to be coming by. She's been corresponding, and she said she's Aww. coming by today. So we will, uh, we will really look forward to, to seeing Great. all of you. So. Yes, and I do, too. And you'll find out more about things that are so edible. That's right. And next week, David Culp will oh, be here. David Culp. Layered and Gardens. He's wonderful. Yep. He's going to talk more about his so, garden. Okay. Come see us. Yes. Have a great week.